it's a miracle. The Blue Jays actually win a game against the Tampa Bay Rays 2-1. to one. However, they still only get five hits in the ball game. But that is not the story of today. The story of today's game, guys, Jays fans, oh, we wake up this morning and we're thinking, oh boy, the Jays are playing the Rays, this might be terrible, we're looking to get swept, this is going to be awful. You check on Twitter, you check all over the place, the Blue Jays have promoted ranked third prospect Danny Jansen and Sean Reed Foley. Jays fans, the future is coming. I know this team, these guys aren't going to be saviors right now. But what they are are pieces to the puzzle of the future. Danny Jansen, a 23 year old catcher with one heck of an arm, and just and he's turned out to find a great bat ever since he found out that he needed glasses. He's hitting 275 there in Buffalo, 12 home runs, 50 something RBIs. And an on-base percentage of like 390 or some crazy number like that. He's having a fantastic year as a catcher, and he's so good defensively as well. Sean Reed Foley, last year with New Hampshire, didn't have a great year. Kind of like John Harris has the last two seasons down there in AA. But really found himself in, in New Hampshire this season. And at 22 years old, gets the call to Buffalo. And with an ERA of 3.50, he gets the call to the big leagues. The ranked 10 prospect is Sean Reed Foley. Guys, here we are. And and, and, and a lot of people saying, well, hey, why aren't they calling up Vladdy? Well, cl- first off, it's clear as day they don't want him up here right now. Because they've had, they've had every opportunity of doing so, but instead they try and throw Russell Martin at third base instead. Trying to turn him into a utility guy because possibly next year you might need to do that with him because Danny Jansen might have a starting role in this team behind the plate in the future. Hey, we don't know. But all we know is that these two youngsters are up here and Sean Reed Foley gets the bump tomorrow with his battery mate Danny Jansen behind the dish. And then game two of that series against Kansas City, good buddy of Danny Danny Jansen, Ryan Barucki takes the hill and I'm assuming Danny Jansen's going to be behind the dish in that game as well. That's going to be exciting. But it's not here yet. Let's talk about the game at hand. Where, like I said, great news for the Jays about the youngsters coming up, and then they get a victory, two to one. Marcus Stroman got the bump today. Clearly, though, he is not the same as he used to be. Not pitches wise, but you, he came out after five innings, five hits, one run, struck out two, only walked the batter. He was not bad at all, but he only throws seventy six pitches. That tells me that he is not a hundred percent. And that blister is an issue because we saw him looking at his fingers and looking at his hands uh, almost the entire game. But somehow he finds a way to stymie the Tampa Bay Rays. Like I said, five innings, five hits, one run, two walks. I mean, he's great. His ERA coming into the game was 5.20. Leaving today's start, it is, where is it here, 5.03. He drops at 17 points in those five innings. Hey, Marcus Stroman starting to find himself later in the season. But the story of today's game not only was Marcus Stroman so good, the bullpen was terrific. After Stroman leaves, leaves the game, they bring in Jaime Garcia, and I'm thinking, boy, that is a tough switch. You got Stroman who's dealing, and now you're throwing in Jaime Garcia? This might get really sour, really bad. And at this point, you're down one nothing, and you don't want it to get any worse, but you're throwing him out there, and it can only get worse. But, excuse me, guys. Ugh. Jaime Garcia goes out there in the top half of the sixth and throws a clean inning and gets a couple strikeouts. And we're like, okay, still a one-run ball game. And now let's go to the bottom of the sixth inning where Luke Maley walks to lead off the inning. And up until this point, the Jays have basically no hits. They're not doing really anything. And Tyler Glasnow gets the hook after five terrific outings and, uh, or innings, sorry, and, but he walks the leadoff batter in Luke Bailey. They want to bring in the reliever, uh, Alvardo, to come in to pitch to Kevin Pillar, who pinch hits for Curtis Granderson. And what does Kevin Pillar do? He rips a double to the left field line. Maley, co- Maley goes to third. Now they're second and third. Nobody out. 
Next batter, Devin Travis. He rips a ball through the center through the center field. Luke Maley comes in to sco score. Pilar at the third base. He doesn't come in to score because he had to hold up. Because it was a line shot. He, didn't, he had to make sure it got down. And we're tied at one apiece. And then Justin Smoke strikes out. And we're like, the, the go-ahead run is on third. All you need is a sack fly. Smokey, Smokey, Smokey. He's been clutch for us all year long, but he does not come up big there. Then they bring in the pitcher, Stanek, who uh, gets a little chopper by Randall Grichik. Um, and the, the, the catcher comes out to get it, right? It was just in front of home plate. The catcher comes out to get it. And Stanek tries to kind of take that spot at home. It was a darn close play. Pilar comes boogieing home. He took a huge risk in the play, but just barely gets his hand in. Uh, I mean, crazy play. But the Jays got the lead. And you know what we saw there? Hustle. Effort. That's, that's it. That's all we're asking for. And that's what we love to see from Kevin Pillar. Now, after that inning, you go, all right, all right, now we have the lead. Now let's see if we can shut them down here. Danny Barnes goes two-thirds of an inning, gives up a hit, walks a batter. Um, but then Tyler Clippard comes out and gets the final guy to end that inning. Then you're through seven. Ryan Tapera comes out there in the eighth inning. He has been really shaky over the last little while. He throws a clean inning. No hits, no walks, no strikeouts. Great job for him there. Then we go to the top of the ninth inning. Ken Giles on the mound. Now, a lot of, Jay, a lot of Jays fans are still very iffy about him, and rightfully so. But the crazy thing is, guys, in safe situations, he is actually very good. In non-safe non situations, he's horrible. Remind you of somebody? Roberto Osuna was almost identical to that. In safe situations, one, two, three run games, he was dynamite. Lights out. You give him a four or five run lead just to get him some work in, he gives up a couple runs. I don't know why. He just relaxes. That's that. And what does Ken Giles come out? He gives up uh, no hits, no walks. Strikes out the guy to end the ball game, gets his 13th save, and his first clean inning as a Toronto Blue Jay. This game had a little bit of everything we wanted to see. A good start, you got a clutch hit, you showed some effort, you played some pretty solid defense overall, no errors in the game, that's always a positive for this team, you know, and the bullpen was stellar. Now, was it a perfect game? No, you would have loved more offense than five hits. Right? I mean, you, when you scatter five hits over you know, a couple innings, you're not going to get too much. Devin Travis had two of the five hits. He was two for three, batting average up to 251 for Devo. He stays red hot. Russ Martin, one for three. Diaz, one for three. Oh, excuse me, guys. I apologize. Yeah, it's, it's that uh, summer summer cold, if you want to call it that. It's, it's terrible. I, I, I got one earlier in the summer, and, and it was brutal. I'm trying to fight it here. Hopefully not to get it. Uh, you know, and, and Kevin Pillar obviously was one for two, uh, obviously with the, the, the big double there in the bottom of the sixth inning. So that's all the hits the Jays got. But thank goodness we are leaving Tampa and heading to Kansas City. Guys, Kansas City is equivalent to the Baltimore Orioles. 35 and 82. They are one and nine in the last 10 games. They've lost three straight. They really have nothing going for them. I mean, I don't know. Are they hurt to all heck anyways? Jesse Hahn's hurt. Um, Ian Kennedy is hurt. Um, Chesler Cuthbert. Uh, Mondesi, Godwin, Horace. Nah, so not, they're, not, they're not crazily injured. They're just not good. And the Jays are going there for a four-game series, guys. And it is going to be one heck of a fun time. Because in the first two games, like we talked about, Game 1... Goes tomorrow night, everyone. 8-15 first pitch. Uh, is it still Kauffman Stadium? I think it still is. Uh, yeah, Kauffman Stadium uh, in Kansas City. Game one, Sean Reed Foley. Oh, he makes his major league debut versus Brad Keller for the uh, Kansas City Royals. Game two of the series, Ryan Baraki on the mound for the Blue Jays uh, for Heath Filmer. Fil Filmer? Fil Filmer? I think I'm going to go with Filmer. Uh, he's actually done pretty well in his limited time with them. And then Marco Estrada goes game three against uh, Birch Smith. What a name. Birch Smith. <laughs> that, that's incredible. And then the finale, Sam Gavilio versus the starter, main starter for them, Danny Duffy, to round out the series before the Jays head to New York to take on the Yankees. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed the game today and you guys are jacked up, to see Sean Reed Foley 
and Danny Jansen work it tomorrow. Hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below what you guys think of the game. Everything about you, everything about your excitement towards these two guys playing tomorrow. I am so pumped. I am jacked up to watch these two guys play tomorrow night. It's going to be a doozy. I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. And I will talk to you guys Tuesday podcast edition. It's going to be a late one on Tuesday, though. Link is in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes, guys. Twitter is down below. Follow up. Send me a DM. Do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow night in the much-anticipated debut of two top 10 Blue Jay prospects right now. Sean Reed Foley gets the bump with his battery mate, Danny Jansen, behind the dish. 8-15 first pitch at Kauffman Stadium. Can't wait. We'll talk to you guys then.